Next, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to explore how health, innovation, and sustainability come together to drive women's success. To take us through this discussion, please welcome to the stage Dr. Mara Aldriwish, Associate Professor, Clinical Scientist, and Principal Investigator at the Ministry of National Guard Health Affairs. Along with her is Dr. Natalie Mubaga, a board-certified reconstructive and plastic surgeon at Karolinska University Hospital, and your moderator, Jada Shukri, content producer at Forbes Middle East. Thank you so much for the round of applause. It always encourages us at the start of anything. Um, I think let's start with where health and wellness and science and technology all converge, and that's in just giving women the best quality of life possible. For so long, they're always viewed as the caregivers, but never the ones that are actually being taken care of. So I want to direct this question to the both of you. With the increase of social pressure and the digital age in general, how do we take a balanced approach towards health and sustainability and you know, really boost women's confidence? Working? Yes. I think we're a um, very valid point and good point. I think we're in a very exciting times when, as you mentioned, women are able to express themselves, not just by uh, words and actions, but also how they want to represent themselves out in the world. And that goes also with how you want to present yourself with your self-image. And, uh, and we have all the tools to do that now. So I see in my patients uh, working as a plastic surgeon that um, females don't just want to uh, regain their health following, for instance, breast cancer but they also want to become more vital. They just don't want to survive, they want to thrive, and they want to become the best version of themselves. And it's very, uh, very, very happy to be part of their journey. Definitely, reclaiming uh, our lives is very vital. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, it's working again. So uh, thank you so much for, uh, for your question. Uh, I think uh, for me, because I'm working both in academia and I'm working also in research center, uh, it was uh, very challenging and difficult to establish my own uh, research and uh, teaching style pathway uh, in the university. However, uh, with the Vision 2030, with the National Biotechnology Strategy, uh, with the leadership uh, at our institution, all these factors uh, empower me and uh, all my women in the same field uh, to proceed and to do their research, to achieve their mission and vision, uh, implement the values. So uh, I think all now, the, uh, all the factors in our life, in our time now, empower us to, to do what we want to do in healthcare. Absolutely, and um, for those of you who are not aware, um, your work focuses on the microbiome. So she's not just making sure that we're healthier, she's actually tackling our longevity. So I have to ask, how is biotechnology transforming women's healthcare? Because this is so cutting edge and we don't know much about it still. Yes. Uh, this is a very important question. So as you mentioned, I'm a microbiome scientist. So I'm basically uh, looking for the gut microbiome in, uh, in Saudi Arabian individuals and in healthy individuals and especially in uh, women. So uh, we are investigating at the moment how the gut microbiome composition and function and how the lifestyle, uh, including diet, exercises in women health, uh, influence uh, the longevity and uh, health span instead of uh, lifespan. So uh, this is an ongoing study we are investigating at the moment, conducting. And uh, the, the beautiful thing is that women are very happy to participate in the study and to take part, volunteer in the study, give us their clinical samples, participate in the surveys, because they are just uh, more passion to understand how healthy lifestyle and diet could influence the gut microbiome that might influence the healthy longevity in individuals. Yeah. And I'm so glad we're focused on the region because 
often enough you'll find the studies being conducted abroad and it's not a one size fit all. Our health is not just a, you know, a standard that can be put across the board. And this sort of links to what you do because you've focused also on the social and cultural elements with reconstructive surgery. You're looking at how people perceive beauty. And of course, your work is extremely impactful, especially when we talk about um, women who have dealt with breast cancer. Tell us how this affects their empowerment levels and their self-confidence. Oh, it's crucial, I would say. Um, I have daily patients who have uh, undergone really complex uh, reconstructions and they regain their self-identity, they regain their confidence moving uh, into their relationships, their social settings, be it workplace. Um, they, they become themselves once again. But also in terms of what we see now with uh, vanity or uh, in social media, I, I do think it's a really double-edged sword because um, how social media is impacting uh, beauty standards, it has reshaped everything. And I do think it is, as I mentioned, a double-edged sword because um, we do have these filters and these unattainable standards, but these are also paired with people who haven't been represented being represented and we see more diversity in terms of beauty and we can celebrate different ethnicities and their way of expressing their beauty and I think that is something that I'm happy to see evolving and in terms of how plastic surgery is changing that I do think that we need to uh, keep a balance so that we enhance um, each individual's uh, own uh, features but still keeping themselves authentic through their ethnic or their own features that they should be proud of. So I think that uh, plastic surgery can be a tool, but it has to be paired along with everything else that's make, make us human because we don't want to be the next AI model. We want to be role models for our daughters and sisters and uh, friends. There's definitely a fine balance between like taking back your your power and your strength and like feeling yourself in your own body and just, you know, the controversies and the social pressure. How do you how do you balance that? How do you balance the social stigma of oh you've had plastic surgery or oh you've done this with the idea of no, I need to be a woman, I need to be empowered. I think um, as plastic surgeons, we do get a lot of help from our patients. Our patients are their own advocates. And I'm really proud of the ones that are open and they can speak about their own experiences. But also, I think we need to, as doctors and surgeons and scientists, inform patients moving forward so that they uh, make really good um, decisions moving forward, informed, scientifically backed decisions so that they don't end up in a place that is um, not desired, so that they can get the best outcomes they have um, for themselves. Uh, this, she, she threw the ball back to your court. She said, we have to do research. How can we expect research to sort of drive the sustainability and the standard of healthcare for women in the future? Well, this is kind of a difficult question, but I think, uh, Research is very important. So if we want to investigate any new thing, we need to do research, yeah? So um, and I'm passionate about research, doing research, especially in Saudi Arabia, where there is a lackness of loads of data uh, in the literature about the Saudi Arabian population. So uh, we are trying uh, to establish, uh, and we are doing our best, basically, to establish uh, research in different areas within the healthcare. So for example, at the moment we are studying uh, the relationship between the gut microbiome and colorectal cancer. Uh, unfortunately, we have seen increasing trend in colorectal cancer in women in Saudi Arabia. So does that relate to the hormonal therapy they have been exposed to? Or maybe it might be related to lifestyle, to diet factors? We, we still, we are, we are investigating this and we are trying to find an answer in order to find a solution. In terms of biotechnology, the next generation uh, sequencing technology, including uh, genomics, proteomics, and metabolomics, now all these now new sequencing technology will, will change our perspective, perspective about the healthcare and uh, how the women's health will be much better in the near future. 
you've definitely you're definitely working to crack the code on uh, women's health. I want to thank you so much for sharing all these insights and just for the amazing work. Uh, you know, a round of applause for the doctors out here. Thank you. Thank you so much.